<laughs> Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome everyone. Right, this video for Marcus Howard sent me a message asking about my sharpening system. Okay, now I've, I've shown it a little bit on videos, but not much because it's not something you can go and buy. This is something I made up for myself. Okay, now um, I've said it before, the sharpening systems and that uh, that are out there don't suit what I wanted, okay? I've tried Slow Speed, I've tried Sorby Pro Edge, I've tried all the different things. In the end, I made my own up for, to suit me. Now, it's not just to suit me, it can be, if you haven't got the money to go and lay out hundreds of pounds on these sharpening systems, this can be a cheap and easy way to get you going as well. Not that this is cheap, because I've got CBM wheels, which are not cheap, as you'd all know. Right, my sharpening system is what, uh, Malcolm wanted to know. Marcus. Marcus, sorry, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, Marcus wanted to know about and how I mounted my wheels. Because um, I was saying about getting arbors made up and people say you've got to be super accurate and all that. No, it's not. What it's got to be is consistent, okay? Now, mine is, and when I turn this on, okay, there's no run out, there's no wobble, everything's fine, okay? And it's all good. Now, the reason I made it with this particular lathe, this this is a, an old Axminster lathe I had, okay. Um, I used it for many years, and then it became basically redundant because I changed lathes, and I had it sat in the cupboard. So I got it out, and I cut the bed off, and I just kept this part of it, okay, so I could keep the, the uh, banjo, and that was it. I didn't want the towel stock or anything. I just wanted that. And then my, uh, this is a wood cut um, for the true grind, you know, for the this one. It comes as a set, the true grind. I got that and I had the, um, I welded that onto the actual bed. So that's fixed, okay? And since then I've adapted it and I've made an extension here. So it comes out so I can put chisels in there to do that grind. I've got the holes here. Most of my grinds, pretty much all my settings are with that fully closed to there. It's all been done, measured out, and I have these two. So first get rid of that. What I would use with the true grind, or what I actually prefer is the Wolverine, right, the uh, one way, the Wolverine one. That goes in there, that does most of my first grind, and then I'll go there, and that does my relief. So I have, on my chisels, I always put a relief bevel. And I'll talk about that a bit more when we get down to the actual sharpening. So the first the first one, we'll do the sharpening, and then the second hole there, we'll put my relief on, okay? And that's basically it for that bit. This one I have is the original banjo. It sits in that one position, I'll never have to change it. And I, I made myself up a, a, a rest, which that goes in there, I just eyeball it like that. That locks in, that's that, and that takes the Tomic. So that goes in, and that was so I could use my Tomic, because I've had a Tomic, I kept all the jigs, but I didn't keep the Tomic. And and that works, and I can sharpen with the Tomic. Since that, I've also gone over to the Robert Sorby one, okay? But with this, when it comes, if you've got one, you'll know I haven't got the actual Bit. It goes into a, a block that sits on, you'll know what it is. And it has a step here, which was no good for me. So I actually turned that away and made it all smooth. Now that one, again, fits in to my tool mech and does that. And for my relief grind, all I do is I take that off, I turn it around, pop that back in, and that will do my relief bevel. And that's how it works. I can also use it for that way if I want to get a different, just so many different angles you can get with it. It's so versatile, that's why I like it. Right, my wheels are mounted on arbors and they go into a chuck. This is an old Axminster uh, 100 chuck, whatever. Yes, K100. Um, yeah, it's an old one, it's not a new one. Now I tighten this down quite, quite well because obviously it's, just holding this, I'm not using it for anything. So I just have a piece of metal here so I can just oh, loosen it up, that's it. I do wrench this down tight. I don't use a chuck for anything else. Right, 
that's my arbor for this okay it has a step there that fits inside this part of the jaw okay and this washer here which came with the axe this is the axminster evolution one and when you bought the bushings very handily it came with these bushings which actually fit the chuck as well so it holds there and it holds there that was just stroke of luck really not by design the arbor now my arbors because i had a grinder i've had slow speed grinder normal speeds even slow speed grinders as far as i'm concerned too fast for me you can get very slow ones but then i found sometimes you want to up the speed variable speed but i, I just grinders i don't get on with you, you these wheels are heavy and i used to have two one on each side you start the lathe up it takes ages to wind up to speed and when you've got to stop it if you want to just oh well that's not quite right i just want to adjust it a little bit to stop it all and test it, it takes ages so you're putting bits of wood on it to slow it down if it's not good so i stripped the grinder down and i took the arbors out okay one for this one and one for my other wheel which i'll show you in a minute that's on another system over there but both can go in here so i took the arbor out of it and i used the arbor the wheel bolts on okay it's got its stop there bolted it up i put a couple of little spot welds on here so the nut can't undo i didn't really need to because i haven't done it on the other one it's never moved um and that's it and that's what i i mount on and i mount that into a chuck this chuck has a 1.8 tpi it's the old axminster chuck so it comes out quite far here and by the time i put a thread adapter on as well that chuck would be sticking out about there i didn't want that on my lathe i don't like thread adapters and all that i like a direct drive if i can so this one went on here and that's where it lives and that's it and for my wheel i just pop it on whether it's of this is a, a 180 grit it is getting close to probably eight years old or something so eight to ten years whatever so it's it's gone it's it's not worn out because these last a lifetime really unless you do something silly to them they'll last forever um but it's the, I don't tend to use the side, so it's not quite as coarse as the side. It's, it's bedded in, just nice. It's really nice now. It polishes it. And all I do is that pops in there, okay, like so, and tightens down. That's it. And then what I always do is I use this, and I do, because I've, it's only for sharpening. I'm not over worried about the chuck, because I don't use it for anything else. I tighten it down like that. I keep tightening until it just doesn't tighten anymore. I don't recommend that when you're turning on your lathe, mm -hmm. as you would always know. Mm -hmm. Tighten a nip. That's it. And then that's back on and that's raring to go. I don't change. I used to change wheels over. So this is does all my sharpening. These are all at the, the, the grind, okay? So this does all these grinds. If I want to reshape that, I do it on the other wheel, which is an 80 grit. It's just quicker. This puts a polished edge on, okay? And that's it. And the reason I like this, and I love this speed, I love the way it works. And the first thing is if I'm sharpening, oh no, not quite right, I want to stop it, okay? I go like that, I've got the hand wheel here, they're stopped. I can make my adjustment, start up again. It's immediate, it's there. Speed, I can go up. I never sharpen up on number four. I normally sharpen, the fastest I go is there, and normally it's always down here, which is 500. But sometimes if I've got to grind something down, then I'll go up a bit higher. I can go up to 3000 RPM on this, because I put the belts when I was actually wood turning. Their maximum is 2.5. Um, some of them are 2000. This was near 2.5, 2.4, I think. I altered the fully fixed so I could get it up to 3000 RPM or near enough. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's my sharpening system. And I love this. As you see, faster, slower. There's no waiting for it to wind down. People say that's slow speed grinders. Turn your grinder on, let it speed up, turn it off, and then you've got a slow speed grinder. No, you haven't. It's constantly decreasing in speed, so you're not going to get a consistent grind. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's just a silly thing to say. It's a slow speed. No, it's not. You've just turned the power off, and it's slowing down now. <laughs> 
and the more pressure you put on as you go as you're going it's just going to slow down so it's, it'll turn it on then it's going to speed right up then it's going to slow down again this turn on there it is faster there it is slower slows down straight away and it's got a brake so when i turn it off if i leave it like that there brake kicks in and that's it it stops so that's why i love it and i can put any wheel on that i want now if you're going to use like an aluminium oxide wheel or anything like that i don't i only use cbn if you are going to make sure you only use it at a slow speed and remember you have no guard if you're going to do that i would make up a guard system okay i'd make something up so i'd have a piece of wood that would fit on here and come across here so i've only got this much showing then if anything happens you've got to catch and it exploded on you because they can explode you're covered you've got a guard the same as you would have very easy just be sensible make a guard up for it that's down to you you could just come across here with a piece of wood down there and everything's boxed in then you can do your sharpening no problem so i can use any wheel i want on that and any size wheel as long as i make it up on an arbor now i have got over here like i say i have used a pro edge didn't like it didn't want it and i've got these ones this is a just a clark grinder it has a i mean the wheel is probably three times the cost of the actual grinder <laughs> but i've got a six inch wheel again it's just on the arbor now if this ever packed, this is this has got to be about, I don't know, I think this is around about 12 years old, this grinder. I bought it from, Clark. I went in there, Machine Mart, and they had a sticker on it. It had been a return one or something, and I paid £29 for it. <laughs> and it's worked perfect. It's, it's absolutely, it's brilliant. Look, but that is too fast, okay? That is way too fast for me to start with. And again, it's something that has to slow down. Uh, I took the I took the guard thing off on that because it makes it easier when I want to change the belt. But I use it for other other things. Um, but I don't use that for actual sharpening. It's way way too fast. I used to sharpen my skews on that. I'll get to that because I don't like sharpening skews on a wheel. It, it's some I do on a wheel, but most of them I will do on a belt. But I've got a different grinder for that. A different one for that over there. Right, okay, the next one I've got. Now this is how very easily you can make one up, okay? Just don't forget though, all this sharpening gear, <laughs> if you do this, you, you don't, don't need, need any of it, okay? <laughs> Just a diamond card. <laughs> just to drop that in, you know? <laughs> right, this is my other one. Now this is just a cheap lathe. I've, I've had it for, it must be, again, nearly 10 years or so. I don't know, everything's about 10 years old. Right? <laughs> Um, it was £119 from Rutland's, okay? It's had a good life. It's done th thousands of turnings. Mainly I used it for spindle turning. Um, and now it's redundant. I don't need it. So it's got a CBM wheel on here. This is the 80 grit one. And with this, it's got exactly the same. It's got the arbor. On this one, I didn't... It doesn't have... This, this wheel came from... Slovenia. Slovenia. It was Slovenia. Yeah. Yes, it was on eBay. I paid, uh, I think I paid, what, I think it was about 75 quid or something. It's a long time ago, it was many mm. years ago. I paid about 75 quid for it. And, you know, one of those you buy it and don't know whether you're going to get it or not. <laughs> it fully tracked, it came through in days, literally. It was fantastic. 80 grit wheel. It's got rounded edges on this one. It's a bit of a pain when you sharpen quite often, you're always slipping off the side for some reason. But it's got, it's a nice wheel, 80 grit, okay? Mounted it on here, it's, I've got same, I've got a chuck. This was another 1.8 TPI. This is a Nova one. Uh, not a Nova, um, a Record Power G3, one of the first ones. It actually tightens the opposite way. So you turn it, it's got left hand to tighten and right to loosen, yeah, weird. Right, um... <laughs> And this one is exactly the same, but I didn't have the bushings on this. It has different a different fitment. Now, what it has is a big chunk. Now, I could actually mount that in a chuck with the wheel, and it would hold and have something to support it. This one, I have the towel stock up on it, okay? Um, but I've got big washers here. See these big washers, these flange washers? They come from 
the original grinder. Mm. They go on either side of the wheel. That will actually clamp in the chuck. And as long as it's bolted up, now you could use, if you ain't got a grinder to take apart, you ain't got a spindle, get a bolt, a nut and bolt, big nut and bolt that fits your thread. If not, you can get, you can get uh, bushings for it. If you ain't got bushings, make one, get one made, whatever, you know, you're a wood turner. You can, you can turn things, make one, make a bushing up for it. But if you get a nut and bolt the right size, bolt to put a washer either side, bolt it right up and then chuck it in with the washer and it's fine. With this one, I've got the towel stock up, just gives me that added security. I've got it on this lathe, I can still use it, so why not? It's stupid not to, wouldn't it? Yep. And this one, uh, I welded up a piece. I've actually welded it onto the bed of the lathe because it's never gonna be used as a lathe again. I need to get some quick release handles. I'll do this with spanners, but I never really change the grind. I just undo those two nuts and I can pull this out or push it in and adjust it. It's got the same two, but these are identical to that one. Mm -hmm. So if I come over and I sharpen on this one and I do a quick grind to reshape, when I go over to that one, it's exactly the same. Put it straight in the hole and I can just give it a fine finish off. They're identical set. But I can take this wheel and put it in that, that wheel and put it in here. Because they're both the same size wheels, they never change. Everything stays exactly the same. If I want to use, I've got to actually make a bigger one than this. If I want to use the um, Tormek thing, I put it, or the Robertson, I'll put that in there. It goes into this rest. I just made this up myself. Pop that in. I need to make a longer one actually, because I'd really do with that being that side and have a long one. And then this is the Tormek thing fits on here, or I use this one. I made this one up. It's for like the Robert Sorby one and that fits on there and then I can go in there and do my grind okay I don't tend to use that as much on there I tend to use the Wolverine pretty much all the time I like the Wolverine one really I highly recommend that and that's that and this one so I've got this this goes from 500 to 3200 I've got it on the second belt because I use it for regrind okay um, I've got it on the second belt, which I think is somewhere around 900, between seven, 750 and 900, and, but it's the same. I turn it on, it comes up pretty much straight away. Everything runs nice and true, okay? It's all there, and that's it. And that's why I sharpen it, that speed. And then, again, when I stop, I've got my hand wheel here, I can assist it to stop, but it slows down pretty quick, and there you go. And that's my two systems. So that's what do all my gouges and things like that on. I'll do my small skews. And when I say small, I mean short bevel skews on the grinders. But for my other skews, my longer ones, I use this over here. I use this belt sander, okay? And the beauty with this one, I've got other ones. I've got them in the other workshop. So I've got another grinder with CBM wheel in my other workshop. Um, a lot of sanders go too fast. I've got this one from Machine Mart because it doesn't go too fast. That's its speed, okay? It's not over fast. And this is what I sharpen my skews, most of my skews on, my big skews. And I'll, I'll get into what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this video. This was for the makeup. And so I hope that helps, uh, Marcus. Basically, don't get over paranoid about accuracy and understand. If they had a slight wobble, as long as it slightly wobbles the same all the time, it ain't gonna matter. Remember, the tool moves. You will get your grind. So it's getting that that consistency, you know, you want. And I use jigs. I know a lot of people do freehand sharpening. I'm gonna go back up that way. I know a lot of people do freehand sharpening, okay? But the, the thing is, I, I don't mind freehand sharpening, and I can freehand sharpen, it's not a problem. I've done it for years. But I don't care who you are, how good you think you are, you will not get that consistent total round there and this relief grind with exactly the same all the way around when you're freehanding, okay? Now, that's important for me. I'm not saying it is for you, but it's important for me to get the cuts I get and the finish I get of the tool. If you have 
little different facets around there. So you've got, you know, you'll see it when you put it in the light, it's got all different little edges. It will never hold a complete bevel, a true bevel. You're always gonna have little changes. And it's noticeable with the tool marks it leaves on the wood. So you have to come in and clean it up with a scraper and things like that. Freehand is good for scrapers. Yeah, I have, again, this is so universal, this thing. It does everything. I have the little table, okay? So that goes on there. Actually, it'll go around that way. So that goes on there. That's tighten up there. I can move it in closer if I want. And I've got a table. And I can do, do whatever I want. I'll do all the different... I can turn it down that way and sharpen them that way round. It's brilliant. If you've got a, a lathe that can go in reverse, then it's good because you can sharpen that way and have it go in that way and sharpen down. It's just so, it does everything. Every, there's no grinder out there that does it. No grinder that will give you everything like, like this does. I've got a trumpet. Oh, God, I've lost it now. Look. There we go. That sits <laughs> up there like that. Right. Yeah, so... When you get different facets on there, if you sharpen freehand, and yes, it is true. I mean, Richard Raffin to say it's it's that little edge there. As long as that's continuous, that's that's the cutting edge, and that is true for cutting. But if you want to come round and you don't want any tool marks whatsoever, you won't get it if you've got all these different facets. It doesn't happen. Okay, you have to have this complete grind, and it's more exaggerated when you go to something where you've got a, a very long grind like that you can't you won't get that free hand that continuous all the way around with no facets it's just complete all the way around okay and it's all right for a lot of what people do but for my style of turning i can't have it must be that continuous like that okay the relief grind two reasons one if you want to make a tight curve, you need the relief grind so you can, otherwise if you've got too much bevel, you can't get a turn, okay? A lot of it for me, because I'm, I'm sharpening on a wheel, you get what they call hollow grind, okay? So you get a slight concave. If that's the full length of that, that is quite a concave. I'd never be able to rub the bevel because it will always have a hollow in the middle. It'll be tip and heel. By taking that off, I reduce that down to virtually nothing. You can't even notice it there, okay? And that's where I come into with my skews, right? So with a skew, if I'm sharpening, uh, say, like this skew or this skew, these have very short short bevels, okay? They're quite thin. They're thin, thinner skews, and they have a very short bevel. That I can do on the wheel, okay? because I'm on my, basically a flat part of the wheel. It's a, it's a 200 mil, so it's a, a eight inch wheel. And I'm, I'm basically on a flat. So the, the actual concave bit, when you look at the side, there is, it's not even noticeable. It's just not there. It's basically flat. So that's okay. When you come to, and this is like I said for me, is what I've found over years. When you come to skews, that have longer grinds like these I do these on my belt because this will be very noticeable these are flat grind okay there's no concave bit because it's done on on the belt if not you would have especially if a more to exaggerate it is if I come over to something like this size okay this would have quite a curve there now, obviously, if it's got that, when I come on and I want to do a cut along here, I'm going to be heel, heel and toe. I can't have the bevel. It's all right to run. Yes, if I come in here flat, it will fit the circle and it will be all right. But as soon as you turn it, there's going to be a gap in the middle. So when you come up, so a lot of people struggle with a long grind. They find it's, it gets twitchy, it gets aggressive. That's because you're sharpening on a wheel nine out of ten times that's what it calls it and as soon as you you lift that little bit to come into the cut you all tip because there's no bevel supporting underneath if you have a flat grind you come on and don't lift the handle to pick up the cut all you do is rotate the tool you just twist slightly and that picks up your cut and that's what i do when i do with um spindle gouge 
here. So if I'm coming on a piece of uh, wood, like I say, if you, oh, this is a bit big. Hang on, let me get a piece here, a smaller piece. When I'm coming onto a piece of wood, again, if I'm there, the concave bit here fits perfect. If I come round to the side here and I'm on there, there's a very, very slight, it's hardly noticeable, but it's, a, it's virtually not there because I put a relief grind on. If that was a complete grind, there would be a gap in the middle. So then I'm on heel and toe. So of course it's gonna make it very aggressive and very twitchy. So if I come in and I try to make the cut like this, I'm not gonna get the proper bevel support. It's always gonna to wanna to go a bit deeper and you'll find it, it could be a little bit grabby. You'd get used to it and you'll use it and people do. But for me, I like to come in with my flute open and then rotate. If I'm there, that can be turning on bevel. The minute I rotate there, that's the cut. So for me, the cut is not raise the handle, it's a rotate, it's off and on, and that's it. And that picks up the cut and then I move and then I raise the handle. And that's, that's why I like the grinds I do and that's why I put a relief on all my chisels, they all have that relief. It's, it does allow you to get in a tighter curve, but it also takes away the hollow grind, okay? I don't like to sharpen these on, on a belt. It's, I, I like them on my CBM wheel. And that comes into the different steels. And if you've got Cryro, um, this one was this one. Yeah, this is a Cryro one. So if you're gonna sharpen that on one of those belts, or you're gonna sharpen that on a, a normal wheel, animal, so I do, you're just gonna smash the carbides out of it. It's, it's a waste of time. It has to be diamond or CBN, okay? Right, so that was that. So, skews, right. I've got one of these. Tormek for sharpening skews. Brilliant, yeah, you put your skew in, you can set your angle, put it on here, and boop, away you go, and you can sharpen it. Right, the trouble I find with this is nine out of 10 times, your skew blade has got too short, <laughs> and you can't get enough blade out to reach there, so then I have to, yes, you can adjust it, I can adjust this and move it in, but then I have to reset. I'm very lazy, I, I'm not lazy in that way. I, once I've got it right, I don't like to change it. That's why I have so many different grinding things. I like it just set as it is, okay? I don't wanna to have to move it. So uh, it's it's good at certain times, but I don't find it that good. It's certainly not worth the money you pay for it. Mm. Right, I made myself one up, there's my one, look at that. Cost me nothing, bit of scrap metal. Okay, welded this together, a couple of grub screws. This, what I do is I get my chisel, uh, it goes right through there. I've got a little grub screw, does all sizes of chisel, does right up to my big ones. Right, so that will come on here. Let me loosen it. I'll bring that up, a little bit more. Come on, let me loosen it, there we go. Bring that up to there, that's on there. Tighten down, pop like that, and that's it. And then that just, I can slide that across. And that's how that one works. And that's all it needed to be, was just a piece of metal like that. My skew fit. I've made it big enough, it's got two grub screws. It's got four, actually. It's got two either side, so I can line up any, any skew I want. That goes on there. Now, as I said, it's okay for this, this short grind. If I go over to the bigger ones, then I use the same. And I will show this when I sh when I sharpen. It's the same jig, and it will go onto one of these ones, and then this again goes in here. And I just do this by eye. I don't have no no guys for. I do have measuring systems. These little wooden things here. Okay, so I can come in for certain tools, and I've got the different for overhang. My skews, I don't bother. I'll just do it by eye. And this one goes on my sanding one over here. This is where I will sharpen all these so I get this flat grind. And this basically, this and that. Come on here, I'll do it by eye. That would be about there. It's not gonna bother me if it changes it by a degree or two. I'm not worried. 
and that's it. And then I start that and then I just hold that against there and I just gently move it across, turn it over and move it across. And that gives it, this has only just been sharpened so I'm not gonna redo it, I'm not wasting steel. Not even for you guys. <laughs> and there you go. And that, that will give me that edge and that's been sharpened on this. And that will give me a dead flat. I, made, I just made this up, I love making things. You know, I come from the year where, when I started turning, you couldn't just go to the shop and buy everything. It didn't matter how much money you had, it weren't available. <laughs> now you just go and say, go in a shop and they say, yeah, this is what you want, mate. Yeah, give me five hundred pounds. There's a Sawbridge Pro. Go away and you'll be out shopping with tools. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No. So for me, it, I come from where you made everything. I made tools. You made things. I made this up to go on my sander. It works for my. I just come in and like that. Seconds, done. And that's it. And that jig, as I said, that little jig sharpens all my skews and it was just little scraps of, well, I just welded it up. That was it. Mm -hmm. I know not everyone's got welders and can't weld. If you know someone, get them to do it. If you want to pay me thousands of pounds, I'll do it for you. <laughs> right, so anyway, that's how I sharp my skews. Roughing gouges. Oh, that's the big one. Now that, that, the big boys. right, a lot of people have this system here where you would bring this out, put your handle in, you have longer ones, put your handle in there, go on and you rotate it. You can get the one that goes on um, a platform and rotate it. The thing with this one is you've got to adjust it for all different because not every roughing gouge will be the same size. I mean, look at these for instance, okay, <laughs> two different sizes. So the handle in there, I might set it for that one, then I've got to sharpen that one, and that's no good at all. So that's why I don't like that system. So for me, hours I've got to get around that. I don't want to have to do a platform and do it freehand. So again, my little inventive side comes out. <laughs> and not only that, I mean, you can do, actually, let me just show you. Because when you get the Tormek one, you get this, little thing. I think I've lost a screw somewhere because I think this screw's in the bottom here and then clamps down there. Or that clamps in there and then a screw goes down through here and I think I've lost it or something. I don't know. But you put that in and you can do your roughing gouges. Well, that's okay if you only have small roughing gouges. Um, I think up to that size is probably the maximum it can do. But it won't do my big 50 mil ones. So, no good to me. So, right. I made one up and this is what I made up is this and I think I have shown this before yeah. this this is a nice bit of I think that was 10 or 12, 10 mil steel welded some bits on took a bit of playing about with it first but that takes my big roughing gouge I've got two screws on here because I've got a gap I should have put the thread through the middle so it just clamped on the middle but I've done two sides that stops it doing that so that goes in and then I'll just bring that down to where it's there. It's there, okay? And then for that, 72 mil is my overhang. I'll put that there, tighten that, tighten that, that's it. That's tight, it's only a nip, that's it now. That sits on there, okay? <laughs> and for sharpening, it's just there. So all I do, turn on. Take it like so, and there you go. That gives me my my single facet all the way around with that. Now my angle, my angle again on here is very steep. I think it's I don't even know. I don't measure this. Um, I. I think I've actually got that at about 30, I think it is. Yeah, that's that's 30 degree, okay, on my roughing gouges is what I have. Now that gives me an absolute fantastic finish cut. But again, now because it's got this long grind on it, okay, it is concaved. I don't know where, how much that's gonna show up on there. It's just about, there is a gap in the middle, okay? Where it's not a flat bevel. 
because it's sharpened on a wheel and because it's a lot the longer the grind the more that concave is going to be but when i'm roughing see it, again roughing gas even if you have a shorter grind on them if you come in and do this anchor your tool put the bevel on raise the handle what happens the minute you raise that handle if we've got a piece of wood here we're doing a big piece like that rub the bevel right i raise the handle what happens chuck the bevel has come away there's no more bevel control no. okay the minute you raise that handle even look there look just a, a fraction like that there's a gap as soon as you raise and being it's on a wheel and it's got a slight concave it's even worse so you come to tip so all you're doing is scrape it if you come there you come back you go like that you've got no bevel support you're going to scrape if there's anything to grab it you'll get a catch so for some of you new turners you'll come like this you'll do that and you'll find it might be a bit and if you get a bit of a gap on your tool rest that's when you're gonna, but you should never have that anyway. Mm. You know, if you can fit your finger between it, you're too far away. Right, for mine, when I pick my cup, I cut above center always. So I'm cutting up here and all I do is rotate. The minute I rotate, I've picked up the cut. So there, smooth, okay, I rotate, I've picked up the cut. That's the cut picking up and I still got full bevel. And when I hold my chisel, I do not hold my hat. I never hold down here and do this. Mine. And Jennifer, she came and had a <laughs> lesson with me. And I got her to do it first. So she showed me how she roughs. So I'm right, okay, now try this. Put the tool on your hand. So it's nice there. Sits nice and comfy. Put that hand there. All that does is stops the chips coming back at you. We come on to the tool rest. We're here. Okay. Up nice, close, personal. Hand there. And all we do, we come on and do a back cut first. So I'm already rotating slightly. So I've just got it there and I'll do a back cut. Reason I'll do a back cut first, if you come in, even if you come into the middle and you go this way and go that way, there's a slight crack or split in that wood. Anything, it will pick it up and it will throw it off in one big chunk. Okay. It will just, and you'll get, and you've all had it. I've had it happen loads of times. If you've turned spindle, you can't have it, not have it happen. You'll get a chunk fly off. Be, be pointed there and fat at that end and <laughs> it goes flying. If you're not wearing proper face shield, you do not want that going under your glasses. Even safety glasses, it will get under. Mm. Hits there, punch your eyeball. Right. So, I always go back cut. If you go for a back cut, even if the wood's got a big crack in it, it will not throw it off. Okay, it will just go over it. You'll hear it straight away. You go like that, you can do one, you can do two. Back cut, then come forward. Then back cut, then come forward. Then back cut, then come forward. On your last one, you come back, you keep going until you get shavings. If you do this way, doesn't matter how far down you go on that, you'll get chips, you'll get chips, those little squares. Yeah. You know those squares you get? Squares, chip, 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 chip coming off, you won't get shavings. No matter how, even, this bone dry wood will give shavings and we don't we'll do it when we do some turning but you go until you get a shave once you get shavings you know you're round then you just slow down your final cut you come along and you'll get shavings this is where my tool rest will be when i'm turning i have a line on here this is where i will rough down i'm above center okay and when i'm actually roughing my tool will be here and i will be cutting this far which is if i put that there i am an inch and an eighth so 30 mil above center is where i will actually be coming into contact with that wood again the beauty of having that long grind you can do that if you've got a shorter grind you can't do it you have to bring the handle up then you're in danger of getting that catch especially with bigger bits of wood with this doesn't matter, I could have it six inches round. I'm still gonna cut here. It's still not gonna give me a problem because I'm above. And if anything hits that, you you normally you might have a bit of a knot. It's harder because it's end grain you're going on to when it comes down. If it's a knot, a knot is always end grain. If you're here, it will try and do that. If you're here, it will just do that. It just pushes it there. You can that's not catch, you can handle that. The most it can do is push you away from the wood. It stops cutting. That's why I do it. 
it's catch free. That's why I always show new turner, Lisa, for a first yeah. time, mm -hmm. piece of wood on, right, do that, boom, no problem. Yeah. Never get a catch. And I prefer to do it with the roughing gun. And and that's how it, it it works, yeah. Okay. Jennifer was the same. She yeah. done, uh, for, uh, she come along and she was brilliant. And I said, right, now you change and do it with the other hand. <laughs> and you come in and do it with that hand. Any cut you make, when you're new to turning, and I say this to everyone, if you're new to turning, fantastic. If you've been turning for 10, 15 years and you've always been right hand and done all this and all that, forget it, don't buy Old dogs, new tricks, don't even try it. <laughs> okay. You should have learnt a long time ago. Yeah. When you're new turners, fantastic. If you're new to turning, right, make a cut. So if you're right handed, make your cut, do your roughing gouge, do that. Right, now stop, turn around, do it in that hand. Okay. If you do it straight away, don't come out one day and think, I'll try left handed and do it. No. This hand can always copy this hand, this hand can always copy that hand, okay? So, make a cut, turn it, make a cut, turn it, make a cut, turn it, make a cut. Before long, you'll fight. it doesn't matter what hand you use. Yeah. It's so handy when you make, uh, especially skew. The skew is the, the main one, okay? You got your skew, again, come in. But the, the skew's the only chisel I tend to, now and again I'll, I'll use thumb and finger, I tend to always hold over the top with a skew because I find you can rotate nicely with it. A bit better that you stay more control. But the same the skew, make a cut that way. Turn it round, make a cut. You do right-handed and people say, I always try to go that way. Because to go that way, well, <clears throat> right. So I've got to come right round here, haven't I? Mm -hmm. And I really want the handle behind the cutting edge, not in front of it. So you might come round and you might be here and you'll tend to, you might come round a bit with a handle. It's awkward. You, you've got this in the way. And you don't want that touching that because the minute that touches that, you put a line on that. <laughs> Can't avoid it. It happens. Okay? So you come in, make a cut there, put it in that hand, make a cut there. If you're going to roll it over, your handle is always behind. It can't come in front because you've got this thing in the way. <laughs> so it's like a stop. You can't come and make the wrong cut you'll come to there but you won't go because you'll have to move down here and that's when you're going to get your catch so you come down and you get there you come down and you get there but that's all on another video <laughs> right anyway totally lost your eye now marcus so you don't even know do you remember what it was right well for my arbors i stripped down my old grinder now a good thing if you do want an arbor and you're not into using a nut and a bolt and all that Go to the boot fairs. You see grinders. It don't matter. As long as it's got the same arbor, you know, most of these will go to a 15 point something. I think it's 15 mil or 16 mil arbor. The smaller ones uh, tend to be half inch or 12 mil, depending on what you buy. If you've got the wheels, these big wheels, normally they come with bushings or whatever. Um, yeah, just get an art get a, a grinder a cheap one for the booth pick them up for five or so but don't matter if it works you're not interested you just get it home strip it down take the arbors out put the arbor in bolt your wheel on it go straight into a chuck done job done job. and the beauty of that see now if you're into going out and doing i don't tend to do it demonstrations and things like that but if you are the problem is oh i forgot to sharpen my tools i'm not gonna have my sharpening system I, don't, I can't take that with me to go somewhere, but as long as I've got a chuck and a lathe, and preferably the variable speed, but even if it's belts, you can put it on the lower belt, I can sharpen my tools. Because I can just take the wheel with me, and it will go into the chuck, go on there. Ah, sharpening though, how am I gonna do my sharpening? Well, that's quite easy, because if it's my roughing gouge, I'll just put it in there, put it on my tool rest. And I can sharpen because I've got my wheel there. I can sharpen it. But what about if I wouldn't do the Tormek system, but I'm going to do my Wolverine? So I'm going to take my Wolverine with me so I can grind. Right, how am I going to do that though? Quite simply, you're a wood turner. All you have to do is make one of those. Okay? Just make that up. That drops in there. That tightens. Okay, obviously, make a couple if it's a different size thing for different lathes. Then, all I've got to do is when I get there, is set that up roughly to where I want it. That's my wheel. That goes in there. And I'll go. I can just sharpen. So, just one minute. I'm just going to sharpen my tools. Boom. <laughs> Done. 
And if you sharp them on a slow speed, of around 500, you won't need to sharpen it again all night. You'll sharpen once and that's it. You shouldn't be, if you're going back and sharpening your tools three or four times when you're turning a bolt, then you are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And nine out of time, 10 times, what you're doing is you're sharpening too fast because you're causing the heat. And the minute you get that little bit of blue, you won't take the temper out of the steel, but that little bit of metal there on that edge, go like that and it will just break off. It will give you a lovely first three or four cuts. And then you think, oh, and it's sharpening again. Huh? Yeah, because it's broken off, it's gone. With that, I don't get no blue and I don't get no fragile edges. That stays sharp like that for ages. You've seen it, I've demonstrated, I've mm -hmm. done the, it stays sharp for ages and ages. So you'll turn the whole bowl outside and inside. You should be able to do it with one tool without sharp. This is Cryro. It lasts, what, five or 10 times longer than any other tool. There you go. You shouldn't have to be sharpening it three or four times to turn a bolt. Right, anyway, that's enough of that. I'll do something else on the shot. I should, I should do some sharpening or something on another video. But I hope that answers. Because it's only going to be a five-minute video. And it's gone for Marcus, yeah. for months, <laughs> isn't it? Right, anyway. That helps you, Marcus. And I'll see you on the next one. Toodle pit. Bye, guys.